Hey folks, Bowtie Dave here, coming up with a new project that uh, I thought might be interesting for someone, maybe not everyone, but uh, we've got a bunch of pomegranate trees out here, and I thought it would be interesting to show you how I harvest the juice of the pomegranates. Now let me tell you something, after seeing this, you're going to understand why pomegranate juice is expensive. Uh, for a pomegranate, in fact, this is one of the pomegranates that fell off of one of our trees recently, um, which means it was ready to go. Um, it's been in the fridge for a few days, but uh, we're going to harvest juice out of this and a few other pomegranates. And you can see there's some, some rotten area on the back. That has a tendency to affect the uh, arils, arils, A-R-I-L-S, arils. Um, but it affects the arils and how they look. So we might end up having to cut some of that out. But before we do that, um, just uh, wanna talk about, of course, we, we, uh, we, we live in Destin, Florida, so we have some good atmosphere for um, growing these things in our yard, and it's very cool. So uh, these are the seeds that, the, that are in the pomegranates. And this is, you're gonna see is the result of what we're gonna do in this video. Uh, so I've actually planted out a bunch of these seeds, and you can see here what I've got is some soil. There's actually a little bit of uh, water down here on the bottom. You might be able to see it moving around a little bit here. But this water down here is slowly seeping up through the dirt, but the seeds are down inside this dirt about, uh, oh, I don't know, quarter inch, half inch. And uh, in fact, I noticed that uh, I need to get some, whoop, that's a little much cinnamon spread on the top here. That helps control the uh, growth of algae, which is not necessarily a bad thing on your soil, but um, we can control it. I didn't, this is the one that had the algae on it. And I would like to keep it under control in check a little bit, but before we go any further let me just get this one also these are all pomegranate seeds and i have a bunch of them in here uh, it takes between uh i think it was uh 30 to 40 days 30 to 50 days maybe for these things to germinate and so uh it's gonna be sitting in this damp soil for quite a while inside. And so it would be growing algae pretty fast. And I really don't want that. So we're gonna keep the cinnamon on there and that will actually help uh, throughout the life of it, the germination. I shouldn't have to do that again. But so that's pom planting pomegranate seeds. And basically I just put the soil in, put some seed start and I actually I think I just used potting soil and I mixed in some uh, perlite, it looks like, probably a little vermiculite knowing me, and then spread the seeds out real thick and then put about a quarter inch of soil on top. And that's about it. I'm just gonna leave it sitting like this uh, till it's ready. So I'm gonna go over, uh, I guess first thing first, uh, we're gonna go harvest a few pomegranates. So here we go. Might need this for some higher pomegranates. And looking up at the top there, actually there's one that doesn't have a bag on it. I'm gonna see if it'll be ready to come. Now, I, the reason why I don't put some of these on bags on some of these is if they look bad. Yeah, see, it's not gonna come readily. So I don't want to get that one. This one here, oh boy, it doesn't want to come. So I've been observing these pomegranates for a while now and they don't um, seem to turn red as, or as red as some do. I've already pulled on this one once, but see, it's got a big old rotten spot. Ah, uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like it's ready. That one's definitely not ready. 
That one's not ready. All right, let me go get my plucker again. And we'll come around to some of these higher ones. I've got one up here. Basically, I'm looking for one that comes off the vine easy. And see, that one is not one either. I've eaten, we've eaten a few of these and they're always really good. There's a good reason why I like these cattle panels because they, uh, I can stick this thing through them. That's not very big either. So moving right along here, see, you know, this is one I've had my eye on right here. barely out of reach oh there it goes yeah that's that's what i'm looking for that came off real easy so i'm gonna grab it by its string here and we're gonna harvest a few more i really like the look of that one way 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 up there that's gonna be tricky to get to Ooh, not sure if that one wants to come yet. It doesn't want to come, does it? Problem is I'm not getting a good grip on it, but it is pulling that branch way down. Here we go. See if I can get my hand on it in here. It's a big one though. Boy, it does not want to come. All right. It's going to live to be picked another day. Looking around, here's a, here's one that's not bagged. Uh, that's all you need is a bunch of heavy breathing in the camera, right? Now that one right there is freshly bagged. It's a beautiful one. I started bagging these as they were coming out, but not until uh, a bit late in the season. So some of these look pretty rough in the bag because that's how they looked before I got them. So let's go over to another one of the trees over here. This one's all ground level. I like the look of this one out here. It does uh, have some really bad spots on it though. Oh yeah, that one was ready. Oh, looky here. How cool is that? Oh, and uh, uh, what is this? Um, I do not know what this is. Makes me think of a cucamelon or something. Um, gonna have to find out what that is. So apparently this is a Guadalupe cucumber. And it's supposed to be somewhat edible. And when ripe, um, they're a bit of a laxative. You strange things you learn walking around the garden. This is a diverse garden and that's a brand new one on me. It uh, looks like it's vined up from down here somewhere. At the base of this pomegranate, I need to find out if I need to remove that and keep it in control or what. Now this is a it looks good, but see, it's a beautiful young pomegranate. I do see a pomegranate over here that has some real ugliness to it. Oh, it just came right off. Yep, that one's ready to go. How about this one? 
Oh, that one just came. That's a beautiful looking one. Oh, it has some rot in the bottom there. Okay, let's go look at uh, another pomegranate tree. We have 10 of them here. Check out the dragon cayenne peppers ready to harvest here. Had a lot of them on there. So there's two here that have already fallen off and they are they are kind of nasty. This one especially. This is really icky. You will not be harvesting juice from that one. Uh, this one looks nice. Is it ready? No, not quite. There is one up here though. It looks promising. It's got a rotten spot on. It's going to come off easy. Okay, so I got a few pomegranates. Check out, oh. check out the harvest here. So we got a few pomegranates we'll go take inside. So that camera drop is what happens when you're trying to do everything at once real quick. Anyway, so we've got the one from the fridge. Uh, these organza bags, these are the little very fine mesh bags that you do wedding favors in and stuff like that. They're also great for putting around your fruits. Um, and uh, as you saw out there, some of the fruit that had the bags looked pretty bad. I, was just bad. I was just trying to keep them from getting worse. Like this one here, that one's in bad shape. We're not gonna be doing anything with that. That's one of those really bad ones that I picked. This one here is really, ugh, it's just seeping everywhere. Um, it was actually in the bag, um, falling off the branch. So we're not gonna do anything with those two. Uh, these can be washed and reused. What I do is I just hose those off uh, and uh, um, reuse them next time. They're very strong bags. Now this one does have some rotten spots, a real rotten spot there, um, but there is a lot of good in here and we'll be getting a lot of juice out of that one. This one here, this is one of the ones I obviously bagged pretty early in its life, but it does have a bit of a brown top and I'll show you what that looks like as we get into this. Here's another one with a oof a lot of bad spots. I don't know how good that one's gonna be. This one here still has some green on it. I'm not sure how good this is going to be um, now that I look closely. I think all I saw was that side and but look it's got green on that side. Oop. That goes down there, okay. And then last but not least, uh, that one looks pretty bad too. I don't know that it's rotten though. We'll have to cut into that. I'm still learning about these. I've been observing these for a year now and uh, um, they don't get the brilliant red that you see on videos. There are different kinds of pomegranates uh, that, that get more red and some that get that stay white so we'll have to uh see um how it looks inside so there is a whole lot of uh compost that comes out of harvesting this juice so which is why i've got the bucket here but uh let me take a good one first one of the better ones Eesh, that's kind of a nasty one we'll start with this one here so what i do uh the arls in here um, A-R-I-L-S, as I've already said, um, they actually are little uh, fluid sacks around the seeds. Now, you remember the cucumber seed harvesting video? The seeds had those same little fluid sacks. Well, those fluid sacks are what we get the juice out of in a pomegranate. And so, I'm going to take this and kind of press down on this. I'm not doing it on the glass because I'll break it, I'm sure. But eventually, and you can, I don't know if you can hear the crackling, but this thing is releasing inside. Now you can use a knife and you can cut a square out of the top. There's several methods about how to open a pomegranate, but if you cut a square out of the top, and then take that section out, you'll notice all the arls are just full in here. Let me bring this up to the camera so you can see real good.
So these are the arls, these little reddish things. You can see they're all kind of attached together. And if you look carefully, there's a seed up inside there. Now these pomegranates get a little bit of red on the ends of the arls. There are a whole bunch of different kinds of pomegranates out there. Uh, so with a knife, and I do this a few different ways, but with a knife you can, and see, because I did the rolly thing, uh, every place where it gets wide here, if you look inside, there's a little filament that separates the different sections. And so what I do here is I use the knife and cut along each one of those little wide areas or filaments. And you can see they're just falling out. They, they want to be eaten, I'm sure of it. So now there's a rotten piece. That is terrible. So it is all brown and yucky. But if we come over here, and I need to keep an eye out for nasty pieces adjacent to that because occasionally you get a few nasty arls like this one right there. Okay, I dropped a few good ones, but there's goop in there. I'm not gonna dig it out. So some of these pomegranates are gonna get more ooey than others, but here we go. So see, this is one of those little filaments. It's just a piece of flesh that separates the different sections. You can see, look at all these arls here and they just roll out. And I'm dumping them in the bowl here, but as you pull these out, I'm just separating the different sections. And now these arls can just be dispatched into the bowl. Now you can actually eat these. Uh, now some of the pom some pomegranate seeds are hard, and they'll break a tooth. I think um, I have not experienced that. And yes. I'm going to be picking these up off the floor because they're going to get so filtered by the time we're done here, it won't matter. But uh, Mrs. Bowtie and I are really liking pomegranate juice. So this becomes our uh, special treat every once in a while. Uh, still have not quite gotten down to the habit of it. So we had some, um, was it last weekend, I believe, or a weekend before? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, we, we had some smoothies at church and we donated six cups of pomegranate juice to the smoothies. And oh, they were so good. I think that was two weeks ago. And I haven't harvested any since then. So they're slowly coming into harvest. I am uh, trying to stay more on top of our pomegranates. And uh, bag them earlier so that they can be more without all the blemishes. Um, the blemishes I'm presuming are stings from insects, which is kind of nasty because what they're doing is they're laying eggs in there. But if you'll notice, this is a really thick skin. They can't, they don't get into the aural. So, you know, if we were eating the fleshy part, uh, it might be different, but in fact, I'm very curious if I were to slice Well, let me get the arls out of here because I want to slice into one of these bites and uh, See if I can see the profile of it and what it is exactly um, Here's one right here. Just cutting. Oh, it's a little harder Well, it's just a brown spot on the outside. So I don't know um I know on some fruits that becomes a bite from an insect. So anyway, we're going to get a, I'm hoping a, maybe a whole cup out of this. Um, woo! Yeah, got to be careful not to do that. Um, you got to keep this under control or else they go everywhere. Which is why I have a nice big bowl here. Because no matter what I do, they do seem to explode. And... No matter what I do, I forget to wear gloves. Um, I've had those black gloves when I cut up the fermented pepper sauce. If you haven't seen that video and you're interested in hot peppers, you go back and watch that. 
<sighs> but my nice clean hands are just now getting clean from the last time, so yikes. Um, okay, so here we go. Can you hear the crunching? Things are kind of coming apart. It's, uh, this is a little greener, so I don't know what we're going to find when we get inside here. I'm going to go ahead and open the top up. Oh, oh, those are very red. That's different. This is bow tie. Look at this. Oh, I thought I heard her. Oh my, these are really red. Look at that. That's beautiful. Hey, and it was still green on the outside. I wonder how they taste. Hmm. Actually, very good. Hey, well, I'm still learning about these things. And it also may be different types of pomegranates out there. This, this is, these are pomegranate trees that were planted by the previous owner. And all I know is they're pomegranate trees, but boy, those arrows are really red. And the pomegranate itself still had all that green. That's interesting. So you can get to learn right along with me here. Wow. Well, I'm going to speed up the camera and get through these so we can get to the next part. So just as a close-up, you can see here how this is structured. The uh, aurals, these are aurals, are on these fleshy parts that don't have as much juice. And there's in these sections. Think of, you know, think of an orange, how an orange has sections. Well, this has sections as well. But when I break it apart slowly, you can see how that section has all the aurals and there's a there's a little core in there that holds them all, that feeds them all. So doing it this way, it is very labor intensive. Um, if you look at how the professionals do it, you know, the people that make your bottled pomegranate juice, they have huge, huge machines that crush up the pomegranates. And, uh, get the juice out and filter it out in totality. Uh, they don't bother with taking out the aurals, as far as I know. That's a little, like I said, that's a little labor intensive. But you can see here, see there's a section there with all these aurals that just fall off. So there we go. Time to move on to the next uh, step here, and that is extracting the juice. Now, I know there's a lot of ways to extract the juice. We have our way that we're using now, and it's just what we have on hand. But look at those aurals. Aren't those beautiful? These little bits don't matter too much. It's going to be filtered out before we're done. But just like little rubies. Some of them aren't as red as others, but they all taste pretty good. So there we go. All right, next step. So what we have here is a little device called the Cucina Pro Cook to, in from, it's from, I'm sorry. 
It's from Kachina Pro, Cook to Inspire, and it's called a tomato strainer. It makes smooth tomato puree. And um, one day I'll let you know if that's true. We have not had the chance to test that yet. Some of you, if you've followed along in my uh, garden tours, you know what kind of luck we've been having in the garden with tomatoes this year. But it's what we had. It was uh, recommended by um, the people over at Living Traditions Homestead up in Missouri, close to, pretty close to our old stomping grounds, and uh, thought, hmm, that looks interesting. So we got one of these. It's not a very expensive thing on Amazon. Uh, but uh, anyway, so it's what we had on hand, and it's what we decided to use. And I've done a few little things. It has a, a suction cup base down here. It has a lever here that suction cups it to a nice smooth surface. Really good. Um, which explains the glass. Uh, that is why I have the glass down here. This is actually an old piece of glass I found on the side of the road. It was an old uh, cabinet door and uh, someone discarded of it. Um, and so this little chute is where the waste comes out and this little white thing here, uh, which is just thinking, this is where the juice comes out and it'll drip into this tiny, tiny bowl. And um, yes, it is a tiny, tiny bowl. And what we're going to get out of those, I figure, what, do, what did we finally do? Four uh, pomegranates, something like that. Wasn't very many pomegranates, um, but you'll see how, <laughs> how little comes out of four pomegranates. So anyway, this does make a little bit of noise, a little popping noise. You can see here that as I turn the handle, this little wheel presses the whatever through that screen that you can see down there. You can almost see that screen. If I come down here underneath and take that off, you can see the screen right there. It comes out, pushes the juice out through there, and the seeds and flesh get filtered out. And the seeds and flesh get pressed out this direction, which you can see. See, there's one of those little flappers that pops and it pushes the waste out this front chute right here. So, without further ado, let's get to using it. Put this little thing under to catch that. This little tiny bowl to catch the juice. Now, one thing with these aurels, uh, as these things pop, it shoots aurels everywhere. And so I, I've got one of these uh, Rubbermaid take-along containers with the red lids you know you get them at Walmart uh, I just set it in the top here so and that kind of keeps it from going everywhere uh, it does a pretty good job but uh, and it's also clear so I can kind of see what's going on down there but I pour in a few and I've discovered when I pour in a bunch it kind of gets clogged up so I only pour in a few at a time And yes, I know there's better ways to juice. We just don't have any ways right now, so we're using what we got. That's what to do. This is a, as I mentioned before, this is kind of a cheap device. Um, I gotta say, some plastics engineer came up with a pretty slick idea, to be honest. Um, it is well engineered for a cheap plastic device. So I encourage you to be careful with it. Um, this rubber, crank, I'm, I'm sorry, this plastic crank handle has a rubber O-ring on it that I'm afraid is already getting ready to fail. The nice thing is you can go down to your local Ace Hardware and replace that little O-ring if you need to, which I have not done yet, but I fully intend to. So that's the last of the arls, and you can see we got our waste out here. <laughs> Don't forget that. Oh, it gets messy. These arls pop everywhere. Yeah, I'm on a plastic table here, one of my work tables. I need to be a little more careful, don't I? 
So I'm actually kind of surprised at how much came out of this. Now this also came with a very useful little tray for your tomato puree and a little uh, pestle, mortar and pestle, is that what it is, that you can push stuff down with, but uh, obviously I didn't use that. It does kind of, with the, these arls do a little uh, weird thing where they don't quite go all the way through though, so you kind of have to, here at the end, you kind of have to make sure they all go down. I like to get everything processed through. But, there you go. So, four pomegranates. This is the first time I've done uh, just pomegranate juice for Mrs. Bowtie and myself. So, this is a good uh, test. And all these arls are pressed. Um, and the thing about the saving of this, these seeds, I don't know if uh, they're still viable because I don't know if this thing has crushed them, crushed the seeds or not. I don't think it has, and that's why I'm doing all the growing of the uh, pomegranate seeds. I want to find out if they're still viable. Uh, we, when we bought this property, we had 10 pomegranate trees on our property, and um, I've successfully killed uh, two of them, and I'm working on a third one. So I'm a little concerned, but here's the thing. <laughs> Folks. I do not have a green thumb. Everybody says, oh, you have such a green thumb. When we bought our house in Texas, we had a pomegranate tree on it, um, which lasted one season for the 10 years we owned that house. So uh, not sure what happened to that thing, but it didn't last. So yeah, I don't exactly have um, green thumbs. Uh, it's just doing a lot of it. So anyway, looky there. So I put the, the juice into this glass so I could pour it. This is a metal mesh coffee filter. And uh, it looks uh, wet because I just forgot what I was doing and poured it in there and poured it back in the cup so I could show you what I do here. All I do is just set that down in there and pour this through that metal mesh. There's, there is a bit of debris in there still uh, from the pomegranate. There's just little bits and pieces of stuff and it makes a little uh, little bit of texture but uh, just a little spoon it does clog up the screen but if you just kind of push the goop out of the way I don't know if you can see that or not but I'm getting all the, the uh, juice out without any of the bits and pieces any of the pulp I guess uh, though it's not just pulp um, I don't know but yeah, it works pretty good. So there is how much pulp I just filtered out of that juice. So now, go rinse this real quick. Now, I will pour this juice back in here. It has a very pleasing color. pucker in it but it's pretty good something to do with pucker and sweetness that's that's all I know has a little bit of pucker though so let's see if we can get four juice glasses out of this mind you four pomegranates mm. Yeah, and as I've said, this, this is not a super productive fruit. Well, hmm, that's not that great, is it? So it looks like Mrs. Bowtie and I will be enjoying a single cup of juice out of that each. So there you go. Four, four and a half pomegranates juiced. Yeah, it took a while. So it pretty labor intensive. I, I like the idea of the big machine. Um, if I could afford to put one out there on the Florida room, I think I probably would. Uh, I've bagged about 80 uh, pomegranates out there with the organza bags. 
actually over 80, probably closer to 100 now. Um, and the newer ones that I'm, that I'm doing won't have all the, the spots on them, which will be really nice. So later in the season, uh, I didn't get organza bags until it was a bit late. And so um, I didn't get a good early start on it. Now for next year, I've got 200 organza, organza bags ready to go. But uh, anyway, so yeah, that's everything I do to collect uh, just pomegranate juice. So I'm going to take this one of these into uh, Mrs. Bowtie, and we are going to enjoy our weekend pomegranate juice from our harvest. Thank you for following along. Appreciate everything y'all do. Give your comments, uh, your thumbs up, um, and uh, especially share this with a friend. Uh, if you know someone that wants to know how pomegranates are harvested, uh, how to do the, how to harvest their own pomegranates, I should say. Um, hope this helps. Uh, pomegranate is not something that everyone has, but I do intend to show a video one day here very soon on how to propagate pomegranate trees, because um, with especially with these seeds would be ideal, um, because. <laughs> At the rate I'm killing them, I might not have any left by the end of uh, two, three years from now. So I got to figure out how to grow more. Anyway, appreciate y'all coming along and, and watching this video. Have a blessed day.